Hello, my name is Ari Lam. I'm the William Fishman Rabbinic Intern at the Jewish Center on the west side of Manhattan. And more importantly, by far, I am the proud nephew of the wonderful, warm, hilarious woman uh, for whom this shiur is Le'ilay Nishmasa, uh, Sarah Lam Drach, Sararifka Bas Harav Nachum Mindel. Uh, one of the things that I love about this Tehillim project is that you truly get the feeling each and every shear that you're being invited into the into the home of of the one delivering this year because you see the background, uh, you see what what's going on in that person's life, you see svarim in the back, you see a dining room in the back. So I thought it was entirely appropriate that uh, on the holiday of Pesach, uh, when this shear is being recorded, that it should be recorded uh, uh in haste, just as the Jews left Egypt. So I'm recording it uh, in my car as we are doing errands. Okay, today's psalm, Psalm 47, is best known because of its liturgical function. Uh, Just prior, the custom has developed that just prior to Tekiah Shofar, to the blowing of the Shofar on Rosh Hashanah, we recite this Mizmor, Psalm 47, seven times. What I'd like to do over the course of this brief shiur is probe into its substance, the substance of our parak, in the hopes, therefore, of uncovering some deeper insight into its liturgical, theological function within the broader context of Rosh Hashanah. Now, what's striking about this mizmor is its distinctive vocabulary. And in fact, um, uh, it shares a, uh, a great deal in common, both linguistically and thematically, with a group of Prakim of Tehillim that are clustered later on in the Sefer, in particular, uh, Mizmar Tzadi Gimel and Mizmarim Tzadi Vav through Tzadi Tes, or as they're better known colloquially, uh, the, the Shir Shal Yom for Erev Shabbos, Hashem Malach, Mizmar Tzadi Gimel, and the Mizmarim that make up Kabbalah Shabbos. And these Mizmarim, our Mizmar Mem Zayin on the one hand, and the Mizmarim of Shabbos on the other, share so much in common that uh, modern students of Tehillim Uh, of psalms, have come to call these group of Mizmorim the enthronement psalms, um, bound together by a common literary motif that pays tribute to God's role as master of the universe, as Ribono Shalolam, uh, and, and, and continue to play off of the theme that God is ascending his throne as king, as Melech Malchei Hamlachim. So what are these enthronement psalms, in particular, uh, in particular our mizmor, what do they all sh- uh, share in common? So the answer, uh, most basically, is that they share a common uh, thematic vocabulary. All of the psalms contain uh, words like malach, to become king, or amim, uh, nations, or eretz, land. In other words, the, the key words that characterize all of these enthronement psalms relate to, ruler, to, to rulership and royalty, uh, and God's mastery over both population, amim, and territory, and eretz. Um, there are, however, important ways in which our mizmor, mizmor mem Zion, is distinct from the rest of the enthronement psalms. What do I mean? In the enthronement psalms dedicated to Shabbos, to Arab Shabbos and Kabbalah Shabbos, we encounter, in particular, imagery that relates to nature and the natural world. We find... Words like uh, Yam, Mayim, and Nahar, words for water, uh, seas, and rivers appearing again and again and again and are completely absent from Mizmor Mem Zayin, from our parak. We find similar words like uh, Tevel, dry land, appearing in all of the Mizmorim, with one exception for Kabbalah Shabbos and, and Erev Shabbos, and is completely absent again from Psalm 47. Uh, some of the psukim that we read on Shabbos, Yismachu HaShamayim V'Sogel Haaretz, Yiram Hayamim Lo'o, uh, let the heavens be happy and the land rejoice and let the sea uh, umlo'o and all that fills the sea cry out uh, and roar. Uh, in in Parak Sadi Zion we read, Harim uh, kadonag namasu melefnei Hashem melefnei Adon kol ha'aretz. The mountains melted like wax before God, uh, before the master, before the ruler over the entire earth. And really the list could go on and on, but the, the basic point underlying this is that uh, in the Mizmorim, the enthronement psalms, for Erev Shabbos and Sha'an Kabbalah Shabbos, we encounter God as king in a particular sense. We encounter God as king over nature, over the physical world. In other words, in these Mizmorim, God's rule, God's majesty is manifest in the natural world. In contrast, Parak Mem Zayin um, is missing all of this natural imagery and instead has distinct military protective undertones. So, for example, we read, and really implicates God's role as protector 
over the Jewish people and, uh, and, and watcher uh, over the Amsagula, over his chosen nation. So, for example, uh, in Pasuk Dalit of, of Perak Memzayin, we read in a Pasuk that should be familiar to most of us from its adaptation into Mishabeirach, whether for Tzahal uh, or the like, Yadber amim tachtenu ulumim tachas raglenu. He should subdue nations beneath us and peoples beneath our feet. Uh, at the very end of the Mizmor, in the very last Pasuk, we read, Ki lelokim magine eretz ma'od na'Allah. The protectors of the land, of the earth, uh, belong to God, or perhaps uh, the protectors of the earth are God's responsibility, and he is greatly exalted. So in Psalm 47, then, rather than, than a king over nature, over the natural world, God here is a particular ish melchama. He is a, a, a watcher over the well-being, specifically, of the Jewish people. God is watching out, in particular, over B'nai Yisrael. Now, although the possibilities for explaining this particular difference between uh, the universalism of the Mizmorim for Erev Shabbos and Shabbos on the one hand, uh, and the particularism of Mizmor Memzayin, of our parak for Rosh Hashanah on the other, are manyfold. I'd like in particular to focus on, on one explanation. Shabbos is an especially particularistic component of the Jewish religion. Multiple times throughout the day on Shabbos, whether in the liturgy or in the Kiddush, we make reference to the fact that Shabbos is Zecher Liatzias Mitzrayim. It commemorates, apropos of this holiday, it commemorates the Exodus an event that is relevant not so much to world history, but in particular, specifically, to Jewish history. It shapes the history of a particular people. And moreover, the Amorayim have a tradition that um, if a Gentile wishes to take upon himself or herself Sabbath observance, uh, or even to commemorate the Shabbos on a day that is not uh, the seventh day, he may not do so. And if he does, he is Chayev Misa. The Ramam says it's Misa Bide Shamayim, it's not a court-imposed death penalty, it's a heaven-imposed uh, death penalty, but nonetheless, this demonstrates the severity with which we view those who attempt to detach Shabbos from the Jewish people. And Shabbos, in other words, is a day dedicated to the internal, communal, maintenance, nurturing of Jewish sanctity, by Jews and for Jews. So much so that we are in peril and Chazal understood that we are in peril of losing sight of the universalistic components of our faith. The notion that God is the Melech Machei Hamlachim, is the ruler over all humanity, and more importantly, that each and every single member of the human race has within himself or herself a Tzelem Elohim. We're all bound together by that common divine image. And therefore, it's precisely on Shabbos that day of particularism, that we must recite those enthronement psalms whose theme is God, uh, is God as king over the entire universe. Because we must recite on a day like Shabbos, where we celebrate our uniqueness, our communal integrity, we must recite He Gidu HaShamayim Tzidko V'ra'u Chol Ha'amim Kivodel. The, the, uh, the heavens will declare His righteousness, and his glory will be beheld by, or his glory is beheld by all the nations of the world. That's Shabbos. Conversely, Rosh Hashanah is a day of universalism. It's a day of judgment. We say in, in Musaf and Rosh Hashanah, Ki zecher kol yitzur balafanecha. The remembrance of each and every single human being is brought before you. On Rosh Hashanah, we all tremble before God as one, awaiting his judgment. And moreover, we celebrate, the tradition is, to commemorate on Rosh Hashanah the anniversary of creation, Hayom Haras Olam. What could be more expansive, what could be more universalistic than uh, commemorating on Rosh Hashanah the entire creation, the beginning of our universe? And so it's on Rosh Hashanah that we must recite that enthronement psalm, Perek Mem Zayin, that specifically details God's protection over and appointing of the Jewish people as his agents in this world. In other words, it's easy to lose sight of the fact, on Rosh Hashanah, as we come together as a human race, that we as Jews have particular unique responsibilities and obligations. Not privileges, obligations. Because we as a Jewish people must be Shomer Torah U Mitzvos, we must be an Orla Goyim, 
And more importantly, and most importantly, we must model for all of humanity kindness, justice, and faith. And we forget this at our peril. And hence we recite that Mizmor, Mem Zayin, just prior to Tekiah Shofar, the central observance of the day of Rosh Hashanah, that Mizmor that reminds us that we as a people have a special duty to maintain throughout the course of the year. So I hope that this will simply serve as a springboard for you uh, at home to explore some of the themes of Parak Mem Zayin. Of course, all Li'iloi Nishmas, uh, my dear aunt, Sarah Lamdrach, Sarah Rifka Basarav Nachum Umindl.